hope you all are do having a good day so welcome to the second video of a video series called next can do backend where we talk about backend stuff you can do using next.js in the last video i shared how you can create rest apis using next.js app router and in this video we'll add database operations into the mix using prisma and postgres and yeah let's start writing some code so throughout this video we will be using this orm called prisma if you haven't used this before no worries it's super simple to get started basically they let you create this prisma schema where you can define your tables and how the data is structured and all and then you can use their prisma client to query and manipulate your data now i will note it's not a must to use prisma or any other orm you can use raw postgres or mysql queries inside next.js but using a tool like Prisma will make your life a lot more easier. So let's check out their docs. Resources, documentation. We are using the ORM. And here you can select your database. For this video, we will be using Postgres. But you have options like MySQL, SQLite, MongoDB and bunch of other options. So let's click on Postgres. And here they will guide you how to integrate Prisma in your code base. Uh, you can read through this but who needs to read the doc right so we'll just do our own stuff let's install it first p and pm i prisma i'm using p and pm but you can use npm yarn or any other package managers once that is done we can say p and pm dlx prisma init And that will create a Prisma folder in your code base. So if I just open it up in my text editor, you can see a Prisma folder. Here you can define your Prisma schema. It will look like a plain text, but you can use this extension called Prisma. And it should give you some syntax highlighting stuff. So now if you open up, you can see how it's highlighted. Now here you need to pass your database URL in an environment. You can see Prisma by default created a test one with local host. You can use this or use a third party service like AWS to get a Postgres database. For this video I will be using a service called Neon. So just visit neon.tech. It will ask you to log in since I am already logged in. I can create a project here. Let's name this next can do backend version 16 is fine. We'll name this next DB region. Let's select Singapore because that's closest to me. Create project. Now that your database is ready, you can get the URL, copy and paste this in your environment. So once that is done, you should be able to write your models here. So let's create one called user. Now inside this object, you can define your table columns. You can check out the docs for reference. Like for example here, we have a three models like post, profile and user. And you can see in the user, they have defined ID, email, name and a foreign connection with post and the profile. Now if you want to look how this schema actually looks, there are some Prisma visualizers that you can use. Uh, there's one I use called Prismalizer, I think it's called. You can check it out on prismalizer.app. I will link it in the description. So we can just copy this. Paste this here. It gave us three tables, user, profile, and post you can see their fields their type and the functionalities it has so pretty cool tool anyways let's get back to our code we can have an ID it will be an integer and by default it will be auto increment let's have a name which will be a string an email which will also be a string We have to mark the ID as ID. Save this. 
Now you can run your migrations to convert this schema into actual database tables. For that, we just run pnpm dlx prisma migrate dev. Let's name our migration init since this is the first one. You can see it created a migrations folder and here it will save all the migrations each time you migrate and it's just replicating the SQL command from our Prisma schema. This is actually one of my favorite features of Prisma because now even if you don't use Prisma in future at least you have this SQL command to easily migrate. Now after running your migration it should reflect on your database. So let's check out Neon. Here let's go to tables. And you can see it created a user table and also a Prisma migrations table. Right now the users table is empty because we haven't saved any data yet. And that brings me to the second part of the video where we will be using Prisma client to manipulate this data. So for that let's install Prisma client pnpm i prisma slash client. Alright, so looks like it was already installed inside our code base. Let's create a util for Prisma. Util slash Prisma dot ts. Inside here, we'll just export a variable called Prisma, which will be a Prisma client. save this now we can use this variable to interact with the database so let's open up our api these are the apis we created in our last video please check it out if you don't know how to create api in next app routers but basically we have a get and a post api here where in the post api we are right now getting the body and the headers and just returning it as a json but what we want to do is now get this data and save it in our database right let's close this for now we don't need the headers and we just console the body and let's return the body let's create a request it will be a post request and the api route will be slash api since it's inside our root api folder and it's a post we need a name and an email right so we already have a name let's add email dev area send at gmail.com let's send 404 not found oh we are not running the app so let's run npm run dev And it's running on localhost 3001. Let's change this to 3001. Try again. You can see we are getting the body response. And also on the console, we are seeing the data. Now to save this inside the database, here we can say prisma dot user. Hmm. We should be able to access the user Ah, so it's not slash extension, it's just prisma slash client. And it's a class, so just new prisma client. Now we should be able to say prisma.user. Now here you have a bunch of options to interact with your data. To save a data, we'll use create. Inside create, we can pass the data. The name would be coming from body.name. And the email would be coming from body dot email. Now, since it's a promise, we need to await this. Save. Let's try to call the API. And seems like everything went well, so we can check the data. Neon. 
refresh now you can see we have our data in the database let's try it a few more times change this to arif1 a1 other gmail arif2 a2 send and you can see it has all our data now you probably want to fetch all this data to show it on your ui right so for that we can utilize this get api so we can use prisma dot user same as before you have bunch of options for us we need all the data so find many let's save the data inside a variable we'll await this have to make this an async function and let's return the users save we don't need this anymore now let's create a new request we will just copy this send you see we get all the data and now you can use this data to sh show it in your ui however you want and that was it super easy right and that's how you can use prisma and nextjs to interact with your database but there's a problem what if someone doesn't submit their email and only gives you their name in this case it was a failed response but they can potentially do a lot more malicious stuff if you don't secure an api so in the next video we will learn how you can add api validations in nextjs so look forward to that and if you like the video make sure to subscribe and yeah i'll see you guys next time bye bye